welcome back. In this video, we're going to finish off acids and bases, and we'll I'll teach you how to calculate pH and about the pH scale in general. So most of you are familiar, at least vaguely familiar, with the pH scale. The pH scale is something we use to designate a substance as an acid or base. It's a number. Most of you are familiar with the numbers. You learned it in middle school. Um, and right below the title of this slide, you see the equation that we're going to use to calculate pH. You can see that H refers to the concentration of the hydrogen ions in solution. So this is uh, mostly an Arrhenius definition of acids that we're going to use to calculate pH. Now we don't really know what pH stands for. Uh, the H part we do, that stands for the hydrogen, but the P is a little unknown. There's some people who think that it stands for power, as in a power function. That may make sense, but um, Arrhenius is the person who came up with it, and he didn't, unfortunately, he didn't document what he was thinking of when he did it, so we're not 100% sure. But at any rate, the pH scale is a logarithmic scale. Now what that means is it's based on powers of 10. On the pH scale, to go from a pH of 2 to 3, for example, means that your pH is 10 times different. Not just one pH unit, which is true, but that one pH unit means a factor of 10 in terms of strength of the acid, the molarity. So for example, a pH of, of 1 is a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. A pH of 2 would be a 0 0.01 molar hydrochloric acid. So that's a factor of 10 difference in the in the molarity. So as you probably know, the pH scale runs traditionally from 0 to 14. I want to go back to another slide here after this one to show you where the origin of some of these numbers come from. But 0 to 14 is what most students learn is the range of the pH scale. It's not actually true. Um, that actually only goes from molarity of 1 as the minimum so if you go to a molarity of 10 for hydrochloric acid, you can actually get negative 1. So realistically, the pH scale for acids really goes down to about negative 2. And negative 2 is the, is the more mathematical limit, bottom limit of the pH scale. But most of the time in high school, your acids are 1 molar or less, so 0. Now, you probably know that 7 is a neutral pH. So what that means is you have equal amounts of acid and base in your solution. In other words, uh, hydrogen ion and hydroxide ions have equal molarity. On the scale between 0 and 7, that's your acid area, and then greater than 7, between 7 and 14, is your basic area. Now there does exist this thing called the pOH scale. And that is for bases. So instead of measuring hydrogen molarity, you measure the hydroxide molarity. And it works in the same way, except the numbers flip. So on the pOH scale, 0 to 7 would be a base, and uh, 7 to 14 would be an acid. Now, we don't really need that very much. I mean, if you work with, if you can find a pH, you can, you can get to pOH super easily. In fact, I'll show you how easy it is in a moment. So we don't do that a lot. I'm just, I'm just telling you that it exists. Now let's go back one slide here, and let's look at the origin of some of these numbers. It's a little complicated, so hang in there with me. You don't absolutely have to know this yet, but um, I like knowing where numbers come from. So the pH scale actually comes from what we call the auto-ionization of water. It's a reaction inside pure water where two water molecules will collide, as you can see in the first equation here. And as we've already talked about, water can be an acid or a base. So when these two water molecules collide, one can be an acid, one can be a base. The, uh, the acid will give an H to the other, and we make the hydronium and leaves behind the hydroxide. That is a classic Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction between just two water molecules. And so there's always a certain amount of that happening in water. It's not a huge amount. It's a very, very low molarity. So water doesn't necessarily like to do that. It just kind of happens every once in a while. But in any glass of water, any cup of water, any amount of water, you're always going to have some molarity of hydrogen ions and some molarity of the hydroxide ions. 
It turns out that's a constant product. The, the multi, if you multiply the hydrogen concentration by the hydroxide concentration, that product will always equal the same number in water at 25 degrees Celsius. We call that the ion product constant for water. It's called KW. You'll learn more about that in AP Chemistry, so don't, don't lose me yet. But look at the value of that number. It's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. That number right there is what sets the upper limit of our pH scale at 14. It's all about what's the maximum product of hydrogen times hydroxide. And then we know that if we have a pH of 7, that is when the hydrogen and hydroxide molarities are equal. Okay, so in this equation here where Kw has to equal 10 to the minus 14, if H and OH are equal, that means at, when they're neutral, that both have a concentration of 1 times 10 to the minus 7. And so that molarity is what sets the pH 7 as being neutral or midway on the pH scale. So I just want to kind of show you that these numbers, the pH scale itself, is not made up. It's not someone just randomly deciding, hey, let's let these numbers be the answer. It is actually um, mathematical. All right, let's switch over to the dot cam. And let's do some quick practice with some pH. Um, at the top of this page, these are the equations that we're going to use. So we have the pH formula. I'll show you how to use the calculator to get that. We have the pOH formula. Notice how similar it is to the pH formula. And then I told you a few minutes ago they are related to each other. And this is how they're related. The pH and the pOH must always add together to equal that very important number of 14. So if you know the pH, you basically can figure out anything else. All right. Uh, <clears throat> let's get down to the bottom here. These first three problems, we don't even need a calculator, and that's why they're there. When you have a molarity written in scientific notation and your coefficient is 1, as it is in the first three problems, since the formula for pH is negative log, remember log is power of 10, in essence what the log function does is take your exponent and bring that forth as the first number. So the log of 10 to the minus 1 is just going to be minus 1. And the purpose of the negative sign in our formula is to turn that into a positive. So for this one, the pH is 1.0. Again, we can ignore the coefficients as long as those coefficients are 1. So let's go down to number 2 here and see if it works again. Here, 1 times 10 to the minus 8. So again, the log of 10 to the minus 8 is negative 8. Minus sign in front of that means the pH of this solution is 8.0. All right, what do you think the pH is of number three? I hope you said 4.0, because if you did, you're correct. And that's all you need. As long as that exponent, or so that uh, coefficient is one, you don't need a calculator. But moving on to number four, we do. We're going to need the calculator. Log of 10 to the minus 13 would just be negative 13. But because now the coefficient is greater than 1, our answer is going to be greater than negative 13. So it's going to be between 12 and 13. Watch, and I'll prove it to you. To our calculator, we're going to do negative log of 5e to the minus 13. Okay, I hope you saw how I typed that in. We'll do it again here in a second. We're going to get 12.3. All right, moving on to the next one, 6.28, 10 to the minus 3. Again, log of, of negative of 10 to the minus 3 just be negative 3. This is larger than 1, so we're going to expect larger than negative 3, so between 3 and 2 on the pH. So to our calculator, let's hit the negative sign, L-O-G log, and then let's put in 6.28, don't forget to use the E-E -E button, and then minus 3. And as I predicted, 
And actually, I need three sig figs, so 2.202. But wait, why did I use so many decimals? That, that looks like four sig figs. It's not, because when pH, we do sig figs differently. This 2, this first number here, came from the exponent. And this amount right here is your placeholders in scientific notation, so that is not significant. The three sig figs are expressed in pH after the decimal. Always. All right, hit pause if you want to. Work number six and see if you can get the right answer. All right, let's see how you did. 9.115 is what I was able to calculate. All right, on the back or the next page, we're going to work a few of these. I'm going to actually skip number seven for the time being. We're going to do the pH and the pOH for 7 through 10. Starting with number 8, let's find, we're given hydrogen, so let's find pH. pH equals negative log of our hydrogen molarity. So let's go to the calculator, negative log 2.1 e to the minus 2. Hit enter, and our pH is one point let's see three sig figs here six seven eight all right so now pH is possible because remember pH and pOH have to add up to equal 14 so if that's the case here pOH equals 14 minus 1.678 if I can add right which is questionable 12.322. That's the pOH. All right, let's do the same thing for number nine here. This time we're given hydroxide, so we have to find pOH first. So I'm not going to set it up, I'm just going to go right to the calculator. Negative log of 5e to the minus 9. So that's going to give us an 8.30 for the pOH. And now we know how to find pH from that. It's just going to be 14 minus 8.30, which is 5.7. That is the pH. Easy peasy, right? All right, on number 10... We'll go ahead and find the pH. That's not going to be... Uh, yeah. Who's interested in that? Nobody, not me. All right, so let's go on to number 11. And so now instead of just being given the hydrogen concentration or the hydroxide, you're being given the acid molarity. So we have to think a little bit, and this is actually a stoichiometry problem. So we have to remember that HCl is a strong acid, and strong acids dissociate to give their ions 100%. And now is where we have to apply our stoichiometry. If I start out with 0 0.0025 molar hydrochloric, in essence, I'm asking, what's the theoretical yield? How much H will I make? I can see that for every one HCl, I get one H. So the molarity here in a one-to-one -one ratio is 0 0.0025 molar. It would be the same for chloride too, but we don't care because pH doesn't doesn't depend on the chloride. At the end of the day, the math on this is the same whether you think through it correctly or not. You're going to take the negative log of that 0 0.0025 and calculate 2.6. But I want you to know really how you do it. The numbers don't change here, but this is a very important thing to do. Because if you go down here, number 14, calcium hydroxide is a strong base. And it's going to dissociate and give two hydroxides. So here, you would make a mistake if you just took this number and plugged it into the calculator. Because, oh boy, that's a huge number. Let's do this. Five times 10 to the, let's see, 
One, two, three, four, five, minus six. Let's do that. <clears throat> so if I do my stoichiometry now, the molarity of the calcium is five times 10 to the minus six molar. But the hydroxide is gonna be one times 10 to the minus five because it's a two to one ratio. So now to find the pOH, you've got negative log of one times 10 to the minus five. Remember how easy we said it is when the coefficient is one. So the pOH here is just gonna be five, which means the pH it's just going to be nine and that's it all right so you got some practice of your own to do make sure you come and ask if you have any questions